Well, Donald Trump took a hard right towards unaccountable authoritarianism in this morning's tweet storm. Peppered in with his usual bragging, his sliming of federal law enforcement, his economically illiterate discussion of trade, and his imprecise criticism of Democrats were a couple of noteworthy declarations of presidential power. The kind that should concern anybody who believes in the rule of law and accountability in government. This morning, he tweeted this dangerous nonsense. As has been stated by numerous legal scholars, I have the absolute right to pardon myself. But why would I have to do that when I have done nothing wrong? In the meantime, the never-ending witch hunt, led by 13 very angry and conflicted Democrats and others, continues into the midterms. Exclamation point, of course. Trump is right about one thing. There are a handful, a handful, though a very small minority of legal scholars who believe that the unqualified text of the Constitution does technically give the president the power to self-pardon. But until now, that debate among scholars on this topic was all in good fun. Legal eggheads sitting around the coffee table in law school faculty lounges playing what if. It, it was never given serious consideration because what president of a liberal democracy would ever do or need to do such an unthinkable thing? Well, enter Donald Trump. Whatever you might think about what the language of the Constitution implies, consider the astounding, obvious moral hazard of having a president capable of committing vicious, even violent federal crimes and then having the ability to self-pardon himself out of them. Caught taking a massive bribe? Here comes the pardon. Murdered the first lady in cold blood? No problem, pardon. Conspire with Russian agents to undermine a free and fair election? Pardon those sins away. Conspiring to stage a coup? Huh, pardon. The primary purpose of the US Constitution is to ensure individual freedom and to safeguard against tyranny. That's why we have the separation of powers into three co-equal branches of government. It's why we have the strict limitations on what the government can and cannot do. And it's why we have a long and storied list of constitutional amendments further limiting government power and the powers of the individuals who steer that government. No rational person can or should ever read any part of the Constitution as giving a president power to facilitate tyranny or to protect himself against his own crimes. That is not only objectively ludicrous, but completely contrary to the message of the United States Constitution. Secondly, Trump declared this, the appointment of the special counsel is totally unconstitutional. Despite that, we play by the game because I, unlike the Democrats, have done nothing wrong. Exclamation point, of course. A special prosecutor is totally unconstitutional, huh? When did this happen? Because during the campaign, you seemed to be quite on board with the idea. And I'll tell you what, I didn't think I'd say this, but I'm going to say it, and I hate to say it, but if I win, I am going to instruct my attorney general to get a special prosecutor to look into your situation because there has never been so many lies, so much deception. There has never been anything like it. And we're gonna have a special prosecutor. So what's the difference, Donnie? Other than the obvious, I mean. What's the difference other than the fact that it is constitutional when you want to investigate your Democrat opponent, but unconstitutional when it is you and your team of traitors who are under legal scrutiny. And why is it you're just now announcing that you think it's unconstitutional? Where were you a year ago when Mueller was first appointed to his position by Rod Rosenstein, who you nominated to be Deputy Attorney General? And listen, before all you MAG Americans try to draw some loony distinction that Trump is saying it's only unconstitutional to investigate a sitting president, that is not what he said. He said, quote, the appointment of the special counsel is totally unconstitutional. 
the appointment. And by Trump's own statements, which he repeated ad nauseum at the time, when the special counsel was appointed, Donald Trump wasn't the target or the subject of the investigation. So that talking point just doesn't fly. Ultimately, it's not entirely clear where Donald Trump got his harebrained idea, since it's not explicitly written in the Constitution that a special counsel cannot investigate a president. No, no court has ever made that declaration, and his own attorneys did not even make that argument in their 20-page memo that they sent to the special counsel. Not only is the appointment of a special prosecutor for these types of investigations completely constitutional, but they're necessary to ensure that any president who is suspected of criminal behavior might be held accountable. As it limits the president's ability to infect an investigation by pressuring his own Justice Department. The time has come to start holding individual Republicans accountable. Where do they stand? Do they stand for the rule of law and accountability in government? Or do they stand with Emperor Trump? Our democracy is in danger right now. And we need to know who in government believes in their own power and the power of the president more than they do in our precious democracy. Thanks a lot, everybody. Follow me on Twitter, at Dollamore, and at StatesmithNews.